now the news. I'm Shane Bigham. The Arab League has welcomed the Beijing Declaration on Ending Division and Strengthening Palestinian National Unity. Assistant Secretary General Saeed Abu Ali has expressed his appreciation for China's historic opposition in support of the Palestinian cause. He said this embodies the depth and strength of relations between Arab countries and China. He said the League commended the efforts and initiatives of the Chinese leadership and Beijing's continued keenness to support the rights of the Palestinian people. At the invitation of the Chinese side, representatives of 14 Palestinian factions recently held a reconciliation dialogue in Beijing and inked a declaration on ending division and strengthening unity. It's the first time that the 14 Palestinian factions have gathered in Beijing for a reconciliation dialogue. The Chinese Transport Ministry has upgraded the emergency response to Typhoon Gaimi to level two, the second highest level. The third typhoon of the year is approaching the country's east coast after making landfall in Taiwan. Two people on the island have been killed and over 200 others are injured. Fujian province across the water from Taiwan has relocated over 150,000 residents. Authorities have suspended passenger ferries. China's National Meteorological Center has issued the highest alert for the typhoon, which could bring rainstorms to parts of Fujian, Zhejiang and Guangdong province. Two people remain missing following a mudslide triggered by heavy downpours in northeast China. The two fell into the water after a mudslide in Naozhou, a township in Jilin province. Rescue work is continuing. Over 120 affected locals have been relocated. Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni will pay a five-day official visit to China. That visit begins on Saturday. The foreign ministers of China and Ukraine have exchanged views on the ongoing Ukraine crisis. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met his Ukrainian counterpart Dmitry Kuleba in Guangzhou. Wang said China has always been committed to promoting a political solution to the crisis, and the country believes all conflicts should be resolved by returning to the negotiation table. He said there are risks of escalation and spillover in the conflict as the Ukraine crisis is into its third year. Wang noted that Russia and Ukraine have recently signaled willingness to negotiate. He reiterated that China supports all efforts that are conducive to peace and it's ready to continue to play a constructive role in securing a ceasefire, promoting an end to hostilities and restarting peace talks. Kaleba said Ukraine values the views of the Chinese side and his country has carefully studied the six-point consensus proposed by China and Brazil on the political settlement of the crisis. A UN report says about 733 million people, or 9% of the world population, may have faced hunger in 2023. The figure is about 152 million more than in 2019. The report warned that the world is off track to meet the target of ending hunger and food insecurity by 2030. FAO Director of Agri-Food Economics David Liberty said there was a combination of factors for worsening food insecurity and malnutrition. So the world may miss this goal if we don't do the investment needed to achieve that. Now the situation is very challenging. Uh, we are in a worse situation today than nine years ago when we were launching uh, this goal to eradicate hunger by 2030. And because the world has changed, we have climate change, we have conflict, we have economic crises, we have rising inequalities. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for justice to help hard-hit countries invest in resilient, innovative and sustainable food systems. The United Nations and its partners have launched a flash appeal seeking more than 136 million U.S. dollars to assist people impacted by Malawi's devastating drought. A U.N. spokesperson said the funds will help to provide life-saving assistance to 3.8 million people hit by the drought. Malawi declared a drought disaster in March due to prolonged dry spells that have damaged crops and hampered food production. Malawi is one of the six countries in southern Africa that have declared a state of disaster due to drought. A Russian helicopter has crashed during a routine flight in the Kaluga region, killing the crew. The Ministry of Defense says the crash occurred in an uninhabited area, causing no damage on the ground. It adds that the preliminary cause appears to have been a technical malfunction. A tanker carrying over 1,400 metric tons of industrial fuel oil is capsized in waters off the Philippines. The Philippine Transportation Minister said the incident has caused an oil spill. Strong winds and high waves are hampering response efforts. The vessel sank in Manila Bay on Thursday morning. The country's Coast Guard said an investigation is underway to see if the maritime accident was related to Typhoon Gaimi. That's the news. I'm Shane Bigger.